Hi, I'm Jay Goffrey. Some of you might already know that. Some of you just want to watch a top 10 movies of 2023 video. And which this will actually not be a top 10 list. It will be a top 12 list. Albeit, usually unlike previous years, I usually have honorable mentions. This one, um, because of the 12 movie rule, well, I'll get to this in my introduction. And usually, at least people who probably do watch my channel know that I usually I usually end each year with my top 10 video. I uh, put it off till the next year because I had a hard time writing this video, which I know it's a top 10 list that shouldn't be that hard to do. And obviously, you can skip this whole introduction and just go to the list, but. There's a reason for why I wanted to really focus on the introduction for this. And usually I also have the problem with just looking at my thing and it being pretty obvious that I'm just not looking at the camera, I'm reading off this. So without pretending like I memorized this or like I can pull this off seamlessly, I'd rather just read from this. So sorry for the lack of eye contact. With that being said, I don't know what will happen or where I might be in 2024, but I'm optimistic as I look back at this year and I want to talk about something important to me. I want to share with others the movies I watched and loved. And I feel like a cliche thing to say would be movies helped me the most in 2023, but the real world, family, friends, and pursuing my dreams did. But movies are still important to me as I dream to be a filmmaker. Watching the best movies to the worst ones to know what it takes to be a filmmaker is what inspires me to do my best. As anyone who makes a movie, it is an accomplishment in and of itself. And sure, not every movie is great, but they still made a movie. Can anyone say they've done that? But what I should want to say is that there's still so many new movies that I loved, movies that made me laugh, cry, smile, challenge me, whether it was made to entertain me or do something I didn't even expect. And it's what I love about movies. Well, I've only seen 86 new movies this year, which I know most people don't see 86 new movies a year. Usually I actually try to see 100 movies each year, but with streaming and not having as much, you know, straight to streaming movies as before or, you know, I have more important things to do. I can't just see movies all the time. Though I will say, I'm pretty sure most people I talk to who are also in the film don't see like 10 new movies each year, but that's not relevant. The storytelling you only get when you leave the house and feel the grand scope on the big screen, or sitting with people you love and feeling like each story told is an experience you went on together without even saying something to the other, or when it's all over, me and the other person could disagree and what we think about the movie, yet still be friends because we love talking about how we feel, and that's why movies are still important to me. That's why this will be a top 12 list, as each year there are so many movies I keep wondering if I make mistakes not putting on the list. Not that I think my past choices were the wrong movies at the time, because, you know, in that moment I truly feel like those were my favorite movies of that year. And there are various reasons why, but each year a movie I didn't see I fall in love with that I wish was on that list when I made the video, but I didn't at the time, or how I feel about that movie months, even years later, might change, or what I think might be the best movies of the year are movies that impacted me the same as the movies I love that maybe weren't better, but... You know, they left a bigger impression on me. It's, movies can, and even if this isn't something I know how to say properly, they can change you or impact you in ways you never know. That's also why movies are important to me. Much as I said, I know the reasons why before. Sometimes it takes not knowing why a movie impacts you in order to know that it does have an impact on you. Because you go back and wonder what it took. 12 movies this year I loved for different reasons. I couldn't leave off the official list and leave them as honorable mentions without feeling like, hey, they should have been on the top 10 list or something. So these 12 movies I recommend to laugh, to cry, to smile, or wherever you might get out of. If I didn't know what to say to convince you to watch it, then maybe you can watch it for yourself and say something I didn't. Or, you know, it's why I hope I can convince you to give a try if you haven't. So that being said, these are my top 12 movies of 2023. Well, actually, before we begin the top 12 list, um, this is my top 10 worst movies of 2023. I usually uh, don't dwell too much on this because I usually end up saying the same things about each movie. And really, uh, if you want my opinion on movies I didn't put on this list or, uh, you know, what I say about these movies more in depth, you can probably see a link in the description below or, you know, just go and you can go to my website or separate videos I did where I talk about these movies more in depth. I just feel like I should give more time and attention to movies that I feel like are worth talking about after all this time. With that being said, my top 10 worst movies of 2023 were Number 10, The Mill Number 9, Mummies Number 8, 
Heart of Stone. Number seven, A Good Wife's Guide to Murder. Number six, At Midnight. At number five, Dashing Through the Snow. Number four, Clock. Number three, Spy Kids Armageddon. Number two, Zombie Town. And my worst movie of 2023 choice was Good Burger 2. I'll be honest, Clock, Spy Kids Armageddon, Zombie Town, and Good Burger 2 were all interchangeable. It's the worst movie I saw this year. I, I know there were, there was obviously a couple of choices that would have been the worst movie of the year, but I didn't see them because, you know, I don't watch them hoping that they're bad movies. I hope to get something out of it that I can be happy about or I think it's worth talking about or, you know, I don't want to go into a movie hating it. I want to come out saying, hey, I got a lot of out of this that I didn't think I got before or I can just have a good time. Not every movie has to be deep or meaningful. It can just make you happy. With that being said, here are my top 12 movies of 2023. Number 12, Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning, Part 1. Ethan Hunt with allies new and old must stop threats with more power than ever imagined when they possess the keys to a doomsday weapon that in the wrong hands could mean the worst is to come and it's up to him to stop it before it happens. The Mission Impossible movies have always been the rare franchise where each movie is either better than the last or stays on the same level of thrilling, exciting, and fascinating through the action sequences to even character moments that keep me engaged with some of the most memorable action sequences of the year and the scope and thrill throughout this movie makes me all more excited to see where it all ends while still finding new ways to entertain me and much more. Number 11, John Wick Chapter 4. I feel like most of what I said about MI7 could be copy and pasted with the new and I hope final John Wick movie as it follows a, you know, a title character for a globe trying Odyssey on finally finding peace with himself as he, you know, he kills hundreds of people along the way facing old and new enemies or surprising allies on a journey of survival, mayhem, and endurance. This movie's action sequences are work of art, both visually and crafted, that, you know, while there are some more impressive stunts done in Mission Impossible 7, this movie just shows what, you know, some of the most interesting action of all time could be. I mean, this movie, the movie's new characters are memorable, and its ending is such a satisfying conclusion to the saga. This was the first movie in theaters I saw in IMAX in years, and that experience I'll never forget. On its own, this is what all action movies should be, and should aspire to become. Number 10, Are You There God? It's Me, Margaret. Not only will I remember I was the only college-aged man in a theater, a 50-year-old woman, seeing this movie with my mother and my brother Kyle, but I did see it because of how much I heard it was great, and I agree wholeheartedly because this movie has heart written all over it. Based on the beloved book of the same name, this adaptation follows young Margaret Simon as she moves to New Jersey from New York in 1970 as she comes of age as a preteen with her family as well as finding their place as they get older while Margaret herself learns to find herself. The movie is a fantastic look that... While it might sound specific, anyone can see themselves in these characters among topics of growing up, religion, and much more. This movie showed me a lot through laughs and touching moments, as well as the tough parts about realistic characters and an optimistic look on growing up. I mean, how can I not love it for that? That and also it takes place in New Jersey. Number 9. Poor Things. A movie that shows that even with the smallest of flaws, it's not about being perfect. It's about being who you want to be because that's what you need to be proud of yourself for. This is probably not one of my highest ranked movies of the year because of some flaws, but it's like what does right, it deserves to be so high on this list. How could I not? It's a story about, well, in a colorful and bizarre man-man's view of the world, Belle Baxter is the reanimated corpse with the brain of an unborn child as a Frankenstein's monster equivalent. Though less about her and others, but, well, it's about understanding a world that might want her her. She finds the beauty and horror and a real fascination and interest to, for the audience to follow about this world and the characters in it. The performances are spectacular. The characters are memorable. The score, the costumes, the sets, and more. There's so much for this movie to praise as it made me laugh. It made me smile for its triumphant moments that question right and wrong. It makes me all the more appreciative of what's right when it comes to the telling the story. You want to tell and feel like you have something to say when others want you to be one way or another. And this movie shows it in ways that really I don't know if I would have come up with. And then also this movie has a surprising amount of sex scenes in it. Like seriously though, I'm just saying. If I like filmed a porno but put an oil canvas filter over it, does that make it art or is it still porn? But with that being said, yes. This movie is weird, it's odd, and fun, and not for everyone. But also at the same time, it is for everyone. And that's why I love poor things. Not actual poor things, you know, no one should be poor. You may have said this was a bad joke. I'm just saying I don't want this taken out of context. 
Number eight, The Holdovers. If a movie can make you feel the warm hug against its cold winter, this movie can do that when you want to laugh and cry and feel hopeful when it could feel like there is none. Yet, at the end, you need to still push yourself instead of playing it safe because that's how I felt by the end of it. When curmudgeonly school teacher Mr. Hunnam is stuckling after a troubled but good at heart kid during winter break, the two along with the grieving lunch lady find with each other what it means to move on past sadness and even when it feels like the world's against you, there are people who will always be there for you. And all you have to do is find that. Thanks to its atmosphere, the perfect dialogue, and the introspective and spectacular performances of the main three, this is a movie anyone can sit down and come out feeling changed by the yeah, end, even if they don't know why. Number seven, Wonka. I'll say it. I cried during the new Wonka movie, made by the same guys who made the Paddington movies, because like those movies, you know, in a world like this, you know, it's it's just so rare in a cynical world like this one, where people who want movies to be darker and more you know, insulting or mean-spirited or just, you know, they just, it's nice to have a movie that is unabashedly full of heart and pure in terms of its characters and all age story of how a young Willy Wonka grew his chocolate empire. The throwbacks to the original are clever while telling a new story on its own with a soundtrack I loved. You know, I really love the soundtrack. It has a matching of characters and world building and a heart at center. This might not be what everyone who loves the original Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory or the Charlie and Chocolate Factory movie is looking for, but if I want a movie to make me smile again after people want me to be a single stem, I'll put on this movie to remind myself that genuine, sincere stories can still be told to delight and dazzle people of all ages. Not every movie can do that, and Wonka was one of them. Number 6, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. The follow-up to the groundbreaking Into the Spider-Verse follows Miles Morales going beyond the world he knows as he must stop new enemies with new and familiar allies across different dimensions, all while finding his way back home, as he must figure out what it means to be Spider-Man at its absolute limit, and at the same time find out who you are beyond the mask. The animation is all the more impressive and amazing, the story gets more challenging, interesting, and while not better than the first, this was easily my favorite part one movie of the year which I don't know how many Part 1 movies came out this year, but I know there was a lot. As by the end, it feels both satisfying and exciting to see where the story goes from there while on its own. Yeah, it felt like, you know, there are still new things we can break ground with in terms of animation and even storytelling in any medium. Because, you know, nothing's impossible. Number 5, Air. Well, you know, speaking of things being impossible, look, in a year that had a lot of movies about a story of how a famous product came to be, I still think movies like these are worth telling for all the reasons any story should be. So, what's Air about? What Air is about is the Air Jordan sneaker brand. It's more fascinating than I thought. Like, okay, it is more fascinating than I thought and interesting in both retrospect and now, and that while no matter how old you get, there are still new things you can accomplish while showing that the only way to push yourself forward or push the world around you forward is to take chances and why certain people deserve to be at the top when you work hard enough in, you know, a movie about just a product and so much more thanks to its cast and writing and fantastic execution. God, I, I fell in love with Air as the first movie that made me feel like I could make anything possible or, well, I can make anything possible amazing this year even if it wasn't the best movie that showed me anything was possible. Number four, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. It took years for this to come out, but while the world will be divided on where the MCU is going now, and while that's in their conversation, but you know, I'll just say it. I just really want people to stop complaining about every new Marvel or Star Wars thing. Like, if it's not your thing, move on with your life. You know, not everything's going to be perfect, or not everything people make is good, but you know, that doesn't mean it's terrible or it should be the only focus you have. Just, God, I'm sick of it. Oh, wait, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. What I'm saying is that it does feel weird to see characters for almost a decade I grew up with. I say goodbye to now, but all these things, well, all things must. And then this movie excels with both the fun of this franchise and the heart in its serious moments. As Rocket Raccoon's character arc is spectacular, where I never would have thought I'd cry in a movie with a talking raccoon in it. But I did. The whole cast and crew give it their all. Remarkable, creative, visual, you know, both digital and practical effects. The writing is as stellar as ever. And even when I see people who don't like this movie, all I can think of is, that's why I love this movie. And no movie this year made me dissatisfied and rewarded for sitting through it. Because, man, all things must end, but who says you can't get the ending you want sometimes. <sighs> Number three, The Wonderful Story of Henry Sugar. 
I went back and forth so much with this movie's place in my list, whether it be the first movie I talk about as number 12, or it be my number one movie this year, since I think this is the only movie this year when I finish it, I said to myself, I wouldn't change a thing about it. But this is a movie, well, okay, this movie is a short film, under 40 minutes, which, okay, I don't really care about Oscars, you know, I don't think it should validate my opinion if it wins Best Picture or not, but this movie should definitely win the Oscar for Best uh, Short Film this year. Okay, but that being said, if you don't know, this is part of Wes Anderson's collection of Royal Dolls short stories, and this one has a story so unbelievable and believable at the same time. I love it for that. Henry Sugar is a story about a man who has it all and discovering a forgotten story within the story of how to see without using your eyes. He opens his mind up to what's important as this movie has perfect performances, set direction, cinematography. While it could have taken more chances as a feature length film, this movie inspired me more than anything else this year. It wasn't the first movie to do so, but this inspired me more than anything else this year. I could make anything possible, even with limits. That's all the more reasons to break them. And I really love the wonderful story of Henry Sugar as, honestly, I think the most well-executed film of the year. Number two, Oppenheimer. Well, this was my most anticipated film of the year, and it paid off certainly, though I don't know what I could say about it that hasn't already been said since by the time I'm writing this, it does feel like, much like this movie, even if there's more to be said, well, let's get the idea across and see the movie just for yourself. And, you know, uh, I went back and forth on this so much if this was my number one movie of the year or what is going to be my number one on the list. But the other one, I will say, I would rather rewatch it more than this, so that being said, this movie, though, you really need to see it. It's a grand epic with its words and the powerhouse cast that this three-hour-long movie hooks you in as quick as you can. When it gets to the end, it doesn't leave your mind. It's a biopic of J. Robert Oppenheimer, a flawed man that, through his perspective, we see the world both how he sees it as we do then and now. And with the development of the atomic bomb and the impact we face now, this movie is what happens when we can sit down and give our time to the art of filmmaking. And the questions it leaves us with has... You know, there are going to be challenges that we have when we watch a movie that makes us unsure how we see ourselves or the world around us once it's over. And we have to reflect upon it and know that sometimes movies are made to really challenge us and we want to be better people because of it. That's that's the power of movies. Not every movie I want to go see, I, re I really want to come out of a movie in a better mood. And even if this movie feels nihilistic at some points, I still remain optimistic because that's that's who I am. Number one movie of 2023, Godzilla Minus One. Ever go into a movie wanting it to be your favorite movie of the year? Well, after all is said and done, you want to expect the impossible to happen because sometimes in real life what is possible feels like it shouldn't be. 2023 is a year I'll never forget for the good and the bad of it. And with the movies I watched and what I wasn't sure would be my number one choice at the end of it all, there was, it was a really hard choice to narrow down what I knew my number one movie of the year should be. But if there was any movie that took risks, took chances, made me a fan of a franchise I wasn't even that big of a fan of to begin with, and because of the word of mouth was strong enough that this was one of the best movies of the year, sometimes it's great to take chances. It's my favorite movie of the year turned out to be Godzilla Minus One, and it's because I expected the impossible out of it, and it shows me what is possible if I choose to see it for myself. I don't know if it's the best movie of the year because it's, what I call it perfect, who knows? But, well, actually, I should know. Is it perfect to me? I don't know if I care, really. But to me, it's the best movie of the year because doing the impossible is more important. A story about when all seems at its lowest, we can come together and prove that nothing's impossible, including a fight against Godzilla with amazing effects and a force to be reckoned with throughout. And most of all, all the, st the story brought tears to my eyes. The performances. Oh, God, the performances. The, the, the action. God. The, the pacing, the... God, the ideas. I, I love this movie. It's a movie about a fight with Godzilla, and sure, the effects are good, and, you know, it's a force to be reckoned with. Like, you feel the force reckoned with, you know, with Godzilla, but most of all, the story brought me to tears. It's the story of redemption, love, family, knowing that you are who you are and you can make it through if you care enough about the people around you, remind yourself that people care about you and what you want, even if it seems impossible, it is possible. The dialogue, the performances, the devastation, and the final lines in the ending I'll never forget. I I cared, I cried, and I smiled. And I know I don't, I didn't really get into much specifics about the movie, because, you know, I, I guess in one way I could say you can go in blind, 
or you know, if you have to look up what the movie's about, if to be interested, do it. I just I really recommend this movie because hey, nothing surprising more this year than this film, and you know, nothing about the movie going in other than just what I heard to be surprised because nothing's impossible. <sighs> Look, I it was really hard to write this list because sometimes I still fear I'm just saying the same note over again or I don't know if I'm really going to have a good opinion. I'm proud of my opinion and I feel like maybe what I say is important but maybe other people don't care and it feels like people who do want to hear my opinion that I do have something worth saying. This movie is my favorite film of the year because Godzilla Minus One made me want to be a better person and show everyone that while movies can be anything, anything can be possible in movies. This was the only movie this year that reminded me, well, people around you who care enough about you remind you nothing's impossible in your life. And sometimes that's, that's more important to be with the people you love. Movies mean a lot to me, but the people in my life mean more to me because... I don't know if I should say it. I I don't need to I don't I don't need to say why. I just I don't need to say why. I'm just I wanna say thank you to everyone who thank you to everyone who um became my friend, to friends I still have along the way, those who like me, love me, whatever. I I really feel confident that as I get older I grow stronger smarter who knows I I don't know what I'm going to be doing next but I know I'm capable of trying to see what's possible and only then I'll know what I can and can't do because in the movies or even real life nothing's impossible until you know what is possible thank you for listening